What up, Reason Gang? I've got 10 hacks for you to speed up your workflow and enhance your productions in Reason Studios. Check it out. First tip, how to add and remove bars fast. So this happens a lot when I'm working on songs that I'll need a section to be longer or shorter. I would have produced a track, but then I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe this section's too long, or maybe it's not long enough. I need to make it longer. A quick way to cut these sections so that everything lines up is to do this. Push S to snap to grid. I like to go to the bar. And make sure you snap your markers here to the sections you want. So let's say I want to remove these eight bars, right? So it's snapped here, snapped here. Uh, you can use Command to bring the right marker. And if you use Alt or Option to bring the left marker, just hold it and it'll move it there. So now all you do is right click on the timeline, hit Insert Bars to Add Bars or Remove Bars. I'll check this out. I'll remove the bars. And look, everything just lined right up here. Didn't all the, all the tracks, all the MIDI, everything just moved and lined up there. And if I push Control Z, it'll all come back. So let's say now I wanna add another eight bars in between here. Just go to Timeline, Insert Bars Between Locators, and now everything got moved here, and I have eight empty bars here, which I can then you know slide or put whatever I want right there. So if you didn't already know that, this is a great way to add or remove bars in Reason, and it just keeps everything lined up. So give it a try. Number two, you can combine instruments to make a fatter sound. So if you like sound design, if you like to make interesting instruments, combine two instruments and try to make something new. Check this out. I've got this Europa bottle pluck. Sounds like this. And I've got this monotone bass on the Basszilla preset. So it'd be cool to get a mix of that high pluck and this low bass sound. So I can combine them Clicking on the monotone, then click on the Europa, make sure they're both selected, right click anywhere on them and push combine. Now they've created a new combinator right here. And when I play, kind of get this unique sound of the pluck and the low end bass. Uh, you can do this with all the instruments in Reason and you can stack a ton of stuff in here. So definitely mess around with combining stuff to make unique, interesting sounds. Number three is favorite stuff in your browser for quick access. If you're tired of looking around for drum samples, snare samples, whatever your favorite samples are, you can save them down here. So just look around here. I'm in a Reason Sound Bank. I'm like, so, so when you find a kick you like, you just right click on it, add it to new favorites list, and then you can name this list, you know, my new kicks, my new fave kick. And now when I go here, it's there. And you know, I can add anytime I want to add stuff there. If I like that, I go, okay, I go to in favorites list and I go to my new fave kick, add it there. And now when I click here, there it is. So you can see here on the left that I have a bunch of my favorites lists. And this is just a really easy way for me to grab the sounds I want quickly when I'm working. doesn't mean I won't change them later, but I do have a bunch of go-to sounds that I really like, kicks that I really like, snares that I really like, that I use often. And instead of digging through trying to find them in the browser, I can just save them to these folders and it makes life really easy. So give it a whirl. Number four, here's a quick way to quantize MIDI. Just select all my MIDI and you push Command K and it will all quantize. See how it moved? I'll push Command Z, push it back. See here, see how that's off? Command K, boom. That's a quick way to lock in MIDI and just make sure you've set here what you want it snapped to. Number five, here's how you change the order of your insert effects. See here I have the Scream 4 going into the compressor. Let's look in the back. You see here it's coming out into the Scream 4 and then out into the compressor and then back into the mix channel. So let's say you wanna change the order of this and you're thinking, oh, I want the compressor before the Scream 4. Well, sliding it isn't the proper way to do it because if you look in the back, you'll see that it's still coming out of the mix channel going into the Scream 4 first and then coming out of the Scream 4 into the compressor. So although it may look like they're in a different order, they're not. So let's put it back. So to change it so that it actually moves the wires, let's push tab, you hold down shift, and then you slide what you wanna slide. So I'm gonna put the compressor above the screen four, and when I let go, you see that it rewired it automatically. Now it's going into the compressor first, out of the compressor, into the screen four, and then out of the screen four, into the mix channel. 
So that's the proper way to change the order of the insert effects in these mix channels. Hold down shift, pick your effect, and then move it while holding down shift. Number six is using self-contained song files. What are those? Reason has a way to make sure that the, that the samples you're using in the program are saved in the session. This is important when you're collaborating with other people. This happened all the time. I would be collaborating with someone who also had Reason. I would send them my Reason session, but then they'd be missing like half the samples I was using because Reason is pulling them from my sample library and they're not actually saved in the Reason session. So if you want them saved to the Reason session, you gotta do this. Go to File, Song Self-Contained Settings, click on all, this is the non-refill samples, click on all the samples you want saved. Let's say I want this Kick9 saved and the sub 37 saves and push okay. And it's gonna save all those samples to this session. So if I share this session with someone else, even if they don't have the same sample packs that I have, all of those samples will show up in their session. This is also good if you happen to lose your samples or misplace them on a hard drive or something. When you open up this session, all of those samples that you used are already saved in the session. So if you're ever collaborating with someone who's also using Reason and you need to send them a session and they may or may not have the same samples that you have, definitely use this setting. Number seven, quick audio import. Now this may seem simple, but I'm often surprised at how often I'm asked how to import audio into Reason. There is the option to go to file, import audio file, but you can also drag MP3s or waves right onto the sequencer. So like here, I have just a, a wave right here. Look, I could just drag it from my desktop right here. And if I want it there, I can, or I can drop it right here on the grid and boom, there it is. So that's a quick way to just bring audio into Reason. If you don't wanna go to file, import audio, you can drag an MP3 or wave right into the sequencer. Okay, number eight, volume fine tuning. So one thing I do a lot is I pitch samples and I'll pitch kicks or snares and I like to use this pitch knob in the redrum. But when I want to get just like one down or it's it's hard, it, you know, it moves in twos. So if I want it to move slower, you can hold down shift and it will move by one. See, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can fine tune the knobs. Same works with these faders. If you wanna move them up or down, they move pretty fast with your mouse, but if you wanna fine tune them, if you hold down shift, they'll move a little slower so you can really fine tune where you want them. Pretty simple thing, but pretty useful. So if you want to fine tune the faders or knobs, hold down shift and they'll move slower. All right, number nine. Here's an easy way to deal with latency issues when you're playing a MIDI instrument. Have you ever had the issue where you're playing a MIDI instrument while trying to record and because of all the stuff you got going on in the session that you're behind, that the MIDI instrument's not hitting on time? A good way to fix this, something I do a lot of the times, is you turn off delay compensation down here and then, and then you really should have no delay when you're playing your instrument and recording it into Reason. I'll do this a lot when my session's getting a little out of hand and I have a lot of plugins on stuff. I'll notice that when I try to play my MIDI instrument or record some new parts, that there's a ton of delay between when I hit my keyboard and when it records. So to fix this so that I can get a good performance, I just turn off delay compensation down here and I get like no latency at that point. So then I can record my part, play this, and then turn it back on after I record it. So if you're ever struggling with that very issue that you're playing your MIDI instrument and it's very delayed when you're recording, try turning off delay compensation when you're performing the part and then turn it back on after you record it. All right, number 10, let's talk about bounce in place. Why would you use bounce in place? Well, if your computer is dragging and dying because you have so many plugins on stuff, it's worth printing stuff down so that you can get rid of all those plugins and now save your CPU some space. But it's also a good way to bounce MIDI tracks. I like to do this a lot and just see them as audio tracks because I feel like I could just deal with them a lot easier when they're audio tracks. Here's how you bounce in place quick. Right click on a track, go bounce in place. Boom. We'll wait, thinking about it. Boom. And there it is, it made a uh, audio track of my MIDI track. And you can also bounce in place audio tracks and it will just bounce all of the effects and everything you had on it onto a new track. So then you can get rid of the old one and now you have a new track with all the effects and everything on it, but it just won't have all the VSTs and stuff taking up all the space on your computer. 
All right, so there you have it. 10 tips and Reason Studios to speed up your workflow and make your production go smoother. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Did you already know these tricks? Drop a comment if there's one that's your favorite. And please like and subscribe. I'm going to keep making videos like this about Reason, about music production, about what I'm doing in the studio day to day. Appreciate you watching. Peace.